Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crime and Entertainment. I am happy to have here today one half of the Skinny Podcast, Joe Perry, aka Little Snuff. Welcome to the show, my friend. What's up, pal? Thanks for having me. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. good. Listen, you uh, are one half of the the Skinny Podcast, and this thing has kind of turned YouTube upside down. Yeah, especially with what they deem the the mob genre, um, with your co-host, and you know what comes with with his name. Um, you know, did you ever have any? We're going to get into your, a little bit of your backstory too, but I wanted to right off the rip just kind of say like, did you ever have any aspirations to doing what you're doing right now? Well, yeah, it was it was always social media. Um, the podcast came, we, we talked about it for a while, me, Joey, a few other people. Um, so we always knew we were going to do something. We mm -hmm. just didn't know when the podcast would happen or if it would ever happen, but we wanted to make it, you know, cause I still believe we are not in that genre, right? We're more of sports lifestyle, you know, stuff like that. You know, it, unfortunately things come about and names yeah. get brought up, things like that. But I always knew that it was going to be a podcast like this. Um, I didn't know it was going to turn YouTube upside down the way it did, right. but you know, I'm thankful for it. I got to say that. Right. And I, I would say, I don't know if I necessarily classify you guys of that either. However, people that do classify themselves as that, uh, you know, have had fun. I think using the name to make yeah. the content. I know a lot of guys have, um, and I don't necessarily know if that's a bad thing. I think that's how YouTube well, works. They, they you know, course, listen, everybody knows it's clickbait. Joey yeah. Merlino's name is going to get you views. Yeah. And listen, we all know that that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. And listen, I don't like the certain people that do it. Not that I don't like them. I just don't like using other people's names to get more, you know, views on their videos, but I right. get what they're doing. It. It's smart, yeah. but it actually helps us because the more you yeah. talk about him, the more people come to our page. Yeah. So it's, and th it's like one of the things that where it's weird because it's not a bad thing to have haters. Yeah, no, of course. I love it. Yeah. Because even when the haters are in the comments, it still, you know, keeps up the algorithm. It still yeah. pumps it in front of people. So Absolutely. like if I have 20,000 people that watch a video of mine that, and every one of them hate it, if they all leave a comment, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it too. Yeah. Same thing. Listen, we have, I always say this, we have 85% positive feedback, 15% right. negative. And you're always going to have the people that are haters and the, the fake accounts and stuff like that. But listen, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get to know you a little bit. Cause I mean, a lot of people, you know, at least know of Joey and a little bit about him, but uh, I, you know, didn't really know much about you, your connection with him. I've of listened course. to a few podcasts and prep for this. And I was, you got an interesting backstory, man. So let's start with you kind of where you grew up what life was like, and then we'll kind of step on up into this. So I grew up in South Philly. Um, I hung out on 16th and Jackson was like the corner we all hung up at. My family's from 10th and Carpenter, which is the Italian market. Mm. That's how my connection comes about with Joey. Okay. His father was friends with my grandfather. My father and him are friends. We all grew up in the same area, same neighborhood. I was always younger, of course. Um, parents are still together. I'm married now. Um, growing up, I went to St. Monica's school, Catholic school. Then I went over to Newman Garetti for high school, you know, stayed with the same group of friends I still have today. Most of my friends are in recovery. Like I am, I'm clean and sober eight years. So Congratulations. You know, thank you. I appreciate that. So always was into gambling, always was into social media when it was popular, always was into that kind of influencer role. You know what I mean? Like something like that. So I was always in the gambling. I was always in the sports, con you know, sports content, always into, you know, lifestyle stuff like nice right. clothes, things like that. You know, you could tell haircuts all the time. Um, just what do you get, two or three days a week there. What do you get? I get two days a week. My buddy, like one of my closest friends, he's in recovery. So, you know, everybody in South Philly, when you're from South Philly, everybody is very close. You know, it's a, it's a tight community. Um, and that's just how I grew up. You know, like I said, my parents are working class people. They're still together till this day. So it's just, I grew up, I grew up. How can I say it? I got the best of both worlds. I grew up with my generation and then I grew up with the older generation. I always hung out with older people always my whole life. Yeah, I did too. Um, my dad always hung around, uh, you know, people around his age and I was with him a lot. And that's kind of who taught me the ropes on gambling. Like I learned, yeah. 
about football and betting and, and race pools and absolutely and things like that, that and watch card games. I would watch him play card games, you know, for hours and they would have, yeah. this, they would cut the top off of a beer box Yeah, and about every so often. Once they would do a hand, they'd take like a five and throw it in there. And, you know, at the end of the night, this damn thing's full. And I'm just like, who yeah. gets that money? And he's like the man running the game. And I'm That's just right. like, why? And, and, you know, all that was just like, I was soaking all that in. Yeah. The like, alternators, no, you can't do any of that. You know, right. everything right, changed. Supposed. But I remember as a young kid, like sitting there watching Joey and my father play gin, seeing my grandfather play gin, you know, always was around the hangouts, the social clubs. You know, I was always younger, but it was always like, you know, I always respected everybody, walk in, shake everybody's hand, say their name, you know, look them in the eyes. Like I was always respectful, not a bad kid. Right. So everybody got the liking to me. And that's why later down the line, how I got into the role of the podcast. Okay. So you knew Joey at a young age. He knew you and family know each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, when I sure. first, a quick little story. When I first went to rehab in 2014, I got on a plane to Florida. I actually got dropped off to him at his restaurant. Really? To make sure that I got into place safe and things like that. Yeah. Wow. That's uh Yeah. And we're going to we're going to get into that because there's a lot, you know, people paint Joe, some people paint Joe in a certain way, but there's a there's a lot of stuff that he's did, man, that's just yeah. like you cannot deny whatever whatever he's got going on in his past. That's his business, but you can't deny some of the good shit that he's Absolutely. did. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's nobody else is doing stuff like that. No, never. You know, uh, it's the truth. It, it is very interesting. So we're going to get into that. But um, you were, I heard on the podcast, you were talking, you remember the Jesters? So Jesters is our New Year's club. So, okay. you know, we just celebrate our 20th anniversary. Are you familiar with New Year's parade in South Philly? Is? Yeah, I've, I've researched it. Yeah. So, you know, we all dress up, we paint our faces. People call it, like they say that we're wearing dresses. It's really not. It's a costume. Right. You know, people who don't understand it, but I'll tell you, if you do understand it, and even if you don't and you come one time, you'll come for the rest of your life. It's it's one of the best. It is the best day of the year. Yeah. I've been to Philly twice. Um, I visited with the family. We've done a lot of the, the normal sites and stuff. You know, the Rocky Steps. I toured the, uh, what's the penitentiary there that Capone was in? Eastern, Eastern State? State Penitentiary. Yeah, I toured that. That was very cool. And then I did come back for a football game. I'm from the Carolinas. Okay. And I came for the football game. And I wish... I had known about the clubs outside of that field. Xfinity Live, that area. If I would have known those were there and they were the way they were, I would have I wouldn't even have bought tickets to go into yeah. the stadium. Like I was I was really considering like trying to scalp them outside. I mean, there were whatever yeah, club it was it's, in it's, they had it's, bull it's, riders it's, in there. The waitresses yeah. were riding bulls upside down, standing on their head. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even want to go into the damn game. Yeah, it's here. crazy. It is, it's yeah. a good time. Yeah. And they told me there's like Philly fans are going to break your balls hard. And they did, but it, it wasn't anything out of line. I was smart though. Cause I wore a, uh, a Dawkins Jersey. So you were good then. So I was still Clemson, which is from the Carolinas. Yeah. But it was a Clemson Dawkins Jersey. It wasn't a, uh, it wasn't an Eagle yeah. Dawkins Jersey. So you were so good. I was, yeah. I was still representing Carolinas, sure. but you know, it was sure. their boy. So yeah, I'm like, maybe I might get shit talked to, but nobody's going to hit me over the head or nothing. Yeah. But, you know, it was all in good fun and they won. So they were in a better mood. Absolutely. But, um, so coming up, you, you've expressed to in some podcasts, and I think this is an important message, especially when you can come out on the other side of it, you battled a little bit with addiction as you yeah. alluded to when you were dropped off there and Joey made sure you got there. How did that start? I think that's always an interesting, you know, so, you know, it started probably like the majority of everyone. It started as a weekend warrior, you know, but a weird little story background is I never even smoked weed till this day. Really? I, went, yep. I went straight to pills. So it was, you know, I started as a weekend warrior. Unfortunately, it got out of control after the first weekend. I knew I loved it. I couldn't stop. And my addiction just gradually got worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And then it took me about, I would say, three, four years in total active addiction to figure out that I had a problem. And, you know, everybody wanted me to go away and I fought it at first. And you know, I went to rehab in Florida where I got dropped off at Joey, but that's not where I stayed clean at. It took me four more times to finally get it. You know, because the first time you go to rehab, you have less than a 1% chance of making it out. Right. So it took, like I said, it took me four times. And when you know when it's right for you, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do it for yourself before you do it for anybody else. What so, kind of pills was it? Per, well, it started with five milligrams of Percocets. 
and then it ended with 30 milligrams of Percocets. I was taking about 300 to 400 milligrams a day at the end. Damn. Yeah. What was like the biggest milligram like per pill? I think it would you say 30s? Well, 30? 30 milligrams was my generation, but before me was like the Oxy 80s, which they yeah. were going by the time I started getting high. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I was on, I had a bad car wreck and um, I was on Percocets for a little while and I had the 7.5s. Yeah. And it's like when I would take them, it would put me automatically to like my sixth beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I was like, I love these things. And I wasn't, and I, I wouldn't never say I was addicted to them. I, I luckily didn't have an addictive personality yeah. to pills. A lot of people do. I um, have, I'm addicted. I have addictive personality to anything. Like I can't. Get one tattoo, I got to get my whole body. Can't yeah. buy one pair of sneakers, I got to buy them all. Like yeah. my wife don't even take me food shopping because I can't just buy one thing. I got to buy everything. Right. So right. that's I'm, just how I am with everything. Luckily, I'm like that a lot. But with with the pills, it wasn't like that. Like I um I could take them, you know, for a weekend, and then I wouldn't need them throughout yeah. the week. You know, I, I abused them. I didn't take them the right way. I should, of course, yeah, um, I understand. Which is a lot of people do. Um. But, you know, I've seen people get on them for legitimate reasons, which mine was legitimate. It was a car accident, but I've seen yeah. people, you know, get on them for a legit, never took pills a day in their life. And when it gets their hooks in them, like they couldn't deal without it. And this one guy yeah. would take his whole script within a matter of a few days. And I'm like, dude, you had 90 pills. You ate that shit in five it days. Matter. Yeah, it don't matter. Now it's getting into the older generation. Like, you know, kids were doing it. Now it's like 50, 60 year old men and women are all of a sudden waking up one day and just starting to get high. Yeah, I watched a, um, and you may have seen it, uh, American Pain. You ever watch that documentary? I won't watch it. I won't watch it. And the only reason is because of, like, they show the needles. And, now, I can get tattoos everywhere. Right. But I can't take a regular needle. I hate it. So I don't watch any of them shows that show the needles. Oh, I don't think it's some shows the needles. Oh, this I'm, one wasn't it? No, this was the documentary about the two brothers that opened up the basically legal pill mill. They were like two brothers that were supplying all of Florida. Oh yeah, I heard about it, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they they basically figured a workaround. They had these doctors that were on the take. Yeah, they opened it up. They put out you know free pain meds here or not free, but like they would they would basically get you yeah, yeah in yeah. there. And people were coming from everywhere, like from Tennessee, exactly. you know, all over the states to come yeah, down there. Yeah. One guy rented a bus, and he would like say, "All right, look, you come with me. I'm going to take you here. I'm going to get you pills." I'm going to pay you 200 bucks. And they would go down and they would just write 120, whatever. Yeah, that's crazy. And I mean, they'd done it for months. Yeah. And, you know, people started seeing what they were doing. Obviously, people were copycatting it. So yeah. then that started like a war in between them down there in the Florida area. It was a really good documentary. One of the guys just got out of prison. Another one is still in there because the brothers even separated at a time. And one of the kind of what really brought them down was one of the guys left. He got hit by a train or he yeah. ran into a train. It killed two or three people. There was bottles in there from that facility. That's Everybody exactly. had pills in there. So it kind of, it kind of yeah. started snowballing after that. But the pill epidemic in this country is, is it's crazy. Out of control. Control. Yeah, and well, just pills, fentanyl. I mean, it's, it's killing people at an alarming yeah. rate. I mean, don't get me wrong. Pills are bad, but I mean, at least people weren't just dying off site trying something for the first time. I got a kid mm -hmm. and I tell them all the time, like you're not afforded the luxuries that I was to be able to try something here or there, like, cause anything yeah. you do now can kill you. Absolutely. You don't know what it is. Everything's fake. Everything's got fentanyl in it. So yeah, you gotta just stay away. E even the vapes and stuff nowadays have got yeah. the, the fentanyl in it. Um, and you talk to like, you're, you're married and you had an interesting yeah. story of, of how you met your wife and you and I kind of had like similar views. Like, you know, we never really look at, went out to, to get in fights, we were always looking to party. And I was, yeah, I lived, growing up, like one of my best friends, his name's Russo, tough kid. Me, him, my buddy TJ, Reverso, we're still best friends, like till this day. We always went out to look for girls. Mm -hmm. I had no interest in ever getting into a fight. Yeah. No interest whatsoever. Now, if I had to get into a fight, I knew I had Russo there because he was always. Right. You know, if, if it came, you could get dealt with, yeah. but you know, you're looking for something different. I'm all, yeah. Just always looking for, you know, looking for a girl, you know, and that's just how it was growing up in South Philly in my generation. And I think the generation before, like we all hung out together. Like the guys and the girls that I grew up with, we're all still friends till this day. Like none of us drifted really apart. We all stayed close together and that's, we went out just to have a good time. That was it. Yeah. 
And then you wound up meeting your wife. I met my wife later in life. I met my wife in 2000. I got to say this right. 18 or 19 around that time. Um, That's when I met her. And I met her because Russo and Reverso begged me to go to a place in Center City, which was a bar. Now, I don't drink, so I don't have any interest in going to a bar. But that just goes to show you, you should never say no. Because I walked in there. The first two people I seen was my wife and her girlfriend. Never, I never talked to her before. And by that time, we were leaving to go to Drake concert. Her friend, Elisa, tapped me on the shoulder and said, can you um, take us down to Chickies and Pete's in South Philly? I said, yeah. My wife, Elisa, and my two friends, we all got in the car. We were all bullshitting. Two days later, actually before that, when they got out of the car, I said to my buddy Reverso, I said, I'm going to marry her. And he said, are you fucking nuts? You didn't even talk to her. I said, you're right. But I am, I said, and you watch. And then two days later, I'm cleaning my car out. I found lipstick in the back seat of my car. I text the girl, Lisa. I said, is this yours? She says, no, it's Danielle's. I dropped the lipstick off in the mailbox. Danielle messages me and says, thank you. And that was it. Just like that. So if the lipstick hadn't been there, are you, are you thinking we might have been, 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 been in this situation today. Yeah, and but it did take me around four to six months for her to say to me she would go out with me because she knew my past and she knew I was younger and I liked going out and girls and things like that. So I had a worker for six months. Oh yeah, well that's why I told my wife too. I was like, look, I always was looking yeah. for the one, but I was having a good time with the Absolutely. wrong ones, the ones yeah. that I knew weren't the one. Yeah. You know? But when that one comes along, you can't. You know. It don't take a lot to change. It yeah. Really now you know, and I had no interest. Of, of any of it. Like I did, I was, you know, I was single. I was happy. I was living by myself. You know, you know, you know, you're younger. I'm just sober now. So it was, everything was happening. It was all great stuff. And just by, I walked in that bar and I was it. Well, that, that's a similar story to me. I mean, I wasn't sober, but I mean, everything else is pretty, uh, pretty accurate. I was living by myself, you know, got my first like real job job. We were partying every weekend and I just happened to spot my wife in this bar and she had never been there before. She had been the week prior and the girl she was with forgot her ID. So they're waiting on somebody to pick them up. And just by chance, she struck up a conversation with a classmate of mine. Yeah. So the following week I'm back in there. They come back because they wanted to check out the club and she's talking to the classmate and I'd never seen her before. So I got yeah. like, who the hell is that? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I started and we, you know, we, here we are rocking 20 something yeah. years later. So. I had a disadvantage because you know how hard it is being sober and clean. Oh yeah. To talk to girls, but I played it. I actually, I would say like maximize the opportunity. Cause I would flat out just say, listen, I'm sober. If you find that weird, I understand 99% will. And, but you know, it was just, I had to play that to my advantage. Like, yeah. I don't think it's weird. So I hope you don't think it's weird. Right. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think they got to appreciate that too. I mean, that's not yeah. something that I was always honest about. It. I never, ever, ever lied about my sobriety. Like people get embarrassed. They don't like talking about it. like my parents still to this day. They don't even like talking about it. Now, did, you, did you have an issue drinking too, or was yeah, it everything? Everything. everything. I mean, whatever it was, it was excess. Whatever it was, everything was excessive. I couldn't do anything that could control it. I just couldn't do it. I tried every which way. Tonight, I'll just do pills. Tomorrow night, I'll just drink. It never worked out. So, mm-hmm. All right. so you you mentioned you did have to have four bouts. I'm assuming the first one. Did you have any thoughts that this isn't going to work, or so, did you know immediately it wasn't going to work? How, how did that? Play? The first time when I went to rehab, I was doing it for everybody else. You know, not doing it for yourself, not doing it for myself, doing it for other people. You know, I was in the union. Um, my cousin found out that I was getting high too. So it was just like the union wanted me to go away. I didn't want to go away. Cause at that time I didn't believe I didn't have, I, I said, I don't have a problem. I could stop. Mm-hmm. Then next thing you know, I couldn't stop. And I went away the first time, came right back home. I lasted like maybe a month, two months, got high again, went back the second time, same thing. Went back the third time. I I was like, it was getting longer and worse and worse as the time was going on. And then the last time I woke up, September 11th, what happened was I woke up in the middle of the night and I took a piss. And I never flushed the toilet. And my mom, because I was living with my mom at the time and my dad on the couch, my mom went in the bathroom and got the drug test, scooped it out. The thing lit up like a Christmas tree. They mm-hmm. woke me up. I came downstairs and it was like an intervention. And I was like, for some reason, something just clicked. And it was just like, you know what? That's it. 
I got to go away. I want to go away. And my father being like, you know, the South Philly guy is like, you ain't going nowhere. You'll detox in that room. I said, then I'll kill myself yeah. because I can't do it. You know what I mean? And my sister and my mom drove me to rehab. I went to a, the last place was Malvern in PA. Great facility, great people. I wind up getting involved in everything there. Like I was cooking people lunch. Like I took on like commitments. I was taking the trash out. I was just doing things different. And uh -huh. I actually had to cut my time short there only 18 days because while I was in there, my father took a massive heart attack and he was like, he was pronounced dead for like a minute and 20 seconds. So oh, wow. I get called into the counselor's office. They tell me what happened, but they won't let me leave. And I'm like, well, you don't understand. I got to leave. And they were worried about me staying there. And they were like, well, who could you call? And I didn't have anybody's number. I didn't remember because, you know, you don't remember phone numbers. I mean, we're in the generation, the iPhone. My best friend growing up, Ray Dottie, who I still talk to this day. We're still close. I remembered his house number. And at the time, he wasn't talking to me because he was mad. So I left like three voicemails at his house. Ray, I'm in rehab. I'm trying to do the right thing. My dad took a heart attack. Please come and pick me up. And then like an hour later, he showed up in the mountains and they picked me up and I went, I went to the hospital and I said, I'll never do it again. My grandfather was there and I stayed sober ever since. Let's go. What well, this is kind of like a two part question. What would trigger you to relapse after your first three trips? I always tell people nothing. I just wanted to get high. It wasn't like, Oh, I was fighting with somebody. So let me go sniff a 30. It was just, I wanted to get high. I never blamed anybody. It was me. I wanted to get high, so I got high. Yeah. So nothing, you know, night out or whatever with the boy you wanted to no. do. It was just it was all you. It was all me. I was just I wanted to do it. And was there other than I mean, obviously I think probably that happened to your father probably, you know, scared you a little bit, but was there anything that really drove it to, all right, this is it. It's never, well, I went from, you know, I went from living go a good life. I had a house, you know, I had a nice car. I had a good job. I was always friends with everybody. And then I looked at myself. I said, I'm living on my parents' couch. Now my car got repossessed. I have no job. The union don't want me back. You know what? Other, like that's how bad it was that like, I couldn't even, nobody wanted to talk to me. So that was another thing that really decided me to just, you know, stay on the straight path. Yeah. And you know, that's the, it's unfortunate. I think some people have to get to that point to where they're, they have no other choice, but to yeah. get better because they burned all their bridges. Yeah. Yeah. You hit rock bottom. And, and there's like no other bigger example that I tell people to look at like Robert Downey Jr. Like that guy was, I mean, you know, started out great career in Hollywood, then got mixed up with drugs to the point to where he crawled through a window and was, you know, in a girl's bed, like just because yeah. he wanted to, to take a nap. I mean, it don't get any worse than that. No. And then now look at him. Yeah. It's what happens. Like, you know, you can turn it around. You can make you it. And I tell everybody that all the time. If, if, if you see people that could do it, I'm not just going to say if I did it, anybody could do it. Them cliche sayings, but right. just look and see it's possible. Yeah. But, but the thing is, I think, and that's why, you know, with, when you have these podcasts, you can platform, stories like these, because I think people get so caught up in the bad and the negative. And I know people do want to see that, you know, yeah, people course. love true crime. Yeah. But I think it's important to also put out the successes and things like this. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. you don't know how many people could be struggling with something. They might be going the same thing you were saying. They don't really absolutely. have a thing that sets them off. They just want to do it. Yeah. And then they may say, all right, well, if he did it, maybe I'll try this, like what you said. And you know, yeah. you never know how your story can affect somebody else in a Absolutely. positive way. So it's, yeah. I think it's good we get that out there. And I think that's good that people that don't know that about you kind of gets that side because yeah, obviously a lot of people know who Joey are and yeah. or Joey is. And when I first seen you guys, I'm like, well, who is this guy? Because I've heard a lot of people hit Joey up about doing a podcast for yeah. a long time. Like yeah, people that had backgrounds in television and all that. I mean, I don't know if you know who Scott Bernstein is. There was rumors yeah, yeah. that he had reached out to him a while about doing it. I think a lot of people wanted it because Joey has always been one of those guys that was accessible to the people. Yeah, and listen, he still to this day answers everybody on Instagram. He's oh, yeah, very. I messaged him a few times. Yeah. I, I didn't know if it was him, but no, it's it definitely funny. him. Yeah. It's definitely him, one hundred percent. Only me and him do everything, so yeah. it's definitely him. But yeah, listen, every a lot of people reached out to them, celebrities, TV hosts, things like that. But it was it was just. It was just a right fit. Yeah. So how did that come about? I mean, did, you, did was it something that somebody kind of 
you know, sprung so, up? Did he approach you? How did this so whole thing come about? We have a mutual friend. Like, listen, at my young age, we're still like everybody is very friendly. Play cards, play poker, gamble, whatever the case may be. Me and my buddy Wags, you know, he's like my uncle. He's, he's my yeah. old dad. So we were always close. And one day we were sitting there talking and we – had this idea of the podcast and see if Joey would be on board. And Joey told Wags and then Kevin Connolly got involved and they were like, but here's the problem is Joe, you need a sidekick. And something went off and Wags and Joey looked at each other and they said, little snuff. And we were like two hours later, I'm sending my content to Hollywood of, you know, gambling content to car dealership commercials. And that's really how it happened. So he had to trust me to get involved in the role. Yeah. So you had a little bit of, I guess I would say a creative side because when yeah, you were the cars, you were doing like videos and stuff that you yeah. had one that went viral, right? Are you right? Oh like yeah. My, my car commercials, they were always 500,000 views. I, the most I ever got was like six, 700,000 views on them. Yeah. So you, you seem like you kind of had a knack for something bigger than that, like a social yeah. media personality. Of course, yeah. You know, earlier on. And so that is a that is a good fit because you need that to go up against, you know, a guy that's charismatic charismatic as yeah. Joey is. I mean Yeah. It's, and listen, we have we have a good time. It's fun. It's a crazy experience. It really is, you know, flying to Florida, flying back, flying to Vegas, New York, wherever we gotta go, we we may it's a good time. Well, I mean, it looks like you guys are having a good time. I mean, I see you guys riding around in the rolls. We yeah. weren't you at the Super Bowl? Super Bowl, we went to Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I been, I, how crazy was Vegas for the Super Bowl? It was insane. I never seen anything like it. I mean, every celebrity known to mankind it was, was there. But which was more crazy to me, and still to this day, I think is crazy, is when a celebrity comes up to us to say, "I love the podcast." I think that is crazy. Well. And you know what? This is my opinion, you know, not as a podcaster, as a fan of, of this genre. Like, obviously we've seen stuff, we've seen documentaries, we've seen stuff that's painted Joey in certain lights. Yeah. And I think the, the general public in, in masses have always been enamored with movies and, and TV shows like Sopranos, Goodfellas, Godfather. Yeah. So anything that they can sink their teeth into, they love. That's why guys like, you know, and I know Joey has feelings about them, but Michael Francis, Sammy, those guys have a lot of, numbers because they do have experience in it and people want that experience. And I think nobody really expected Joey to come out, you know, and have a podcast because of, you know, certain aspects. But I think yeah. the way he did it was smart because he come out and he attacked people that have, you know, cooperated. He done it. Like he said, for, I forgot how he worded it, it was when one of y'all's first clips, but like, we're going to be the podcast for the good guys. We're going to be the podcast for the good guys. We're going to tell the push in reality. All the informants, rats, whatever you want to call them, they're telling one side of the story. Mm -hmm. They're literally sitting up there bragging that they killed 18 people. They baseball batted 15 people. They stole 60 million. They did this. They did that. But they're not telling you the people on the other side that it affected, the yeah. families, the kids. You know, you put their fathers and mothers in jail or whatever the case may be. You killed their father. Now you're bragging about it on the Internet. Like, it's just – it's crazy to me. And I don't think – and then at the end, now that we came out with our podcast, now their thing is we did it for the we do it for the kids. You know, we're not saying that this life is good. It's bullshit. If Joey never comes on social media, they'd still be doing the same thing. Yeah, um, I know that uh, you actually messaged me on a TikTok. Yes, I think of uh, of Gene Barillo. Yeah, and that kind of. I know. I don't know. Who spoke of who first? Do you know who he, spoke of who first? He said that he was going to smack me and Joey if he seen us in Florida. Yeah. We, I never even knew who the kid was. Joey still doesn't know who he is. Like now, I know who he is close to social media, but right. never had, never mentioned his name, never did anything. Listen, everybody knows how Gene is, and he says it that he likes conflict. Yeah. Never said his name, didn't care to ever say his name. He said he was going to smack us, and that that's how this all started. What, what do you make of all this? Because like, I think it's, it's been very interesting. You guys have given, I, I, I say like y'all are like the, the YouTube's version of Donald Trump. When Donald Trump started running for president, every newscaster in the world had a job for like six or so years Yeah, like when he said he was going to run all through his presidency. Like everybody was Trump, Trump, Trump. If Trump hadn't been in there, I don't know if half these people would have been employed. That yeah. was their job. 
And it seemed like that was kind of how it went on YouTube. Everybody was talking about you guys reposting yeah. your videos. Some people, I think, got demonetized because they were reposting y'all shit. 100%. And, and that's something that I never did. Yeah. And I, well, I don't do that with anybody, not just y'all, because I've worked too hard for my channel. Uh, you know, and it's not even that big, but still yeah, yeah. I, it's blood, sweat and tears. So yeah. I never would repost anything just because of the chance. Of course. Yeah. But I mean, it was just like it was everywhere I looked. And I think that helped grow you guys. I'm Absolutely. sure it didn't hurt y'all's yeah. feelings that they were no, doing. We keep reposting us. Keep talking bad about us. We 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 don't care at all. It will never bother us. Well, not everybody was talking bad. I mean, there was some positive things. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. That's why I said 85 percent positive, 15 percent negative. Yeah. And so I got to ask this one question until now, Joey has done the podcast with you. You guys cover sports. You've had some other interviews that we're going to uh, talk about here in a minute, but there has been some news that dropped. And I don't know if you can say, but I got to ask you my, my investigative bone. I'd be sure. you know, remiss if I didn't. Is Joey going on Vlad? Yes, he is. Yes. We, we, we it will probably be out before this gets aired. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I need to get this clip out pretty quick yeah. and to yeah. corroborate that because there's been rumors, but you kind of yeah, submitted yeah. it. Don't they, don't they keep secret? Yeah, he went on Vlad. So, obviously, I mean, that's his his decision. He made it. But what do you think drove that decision? Because I believe everybody probably had to reach out to him, but I well, knew he would never go on another well, you gotta, you, other guy. You, you got to realize it that a guy like, you know, Joey Merlino is going to go on a platform that's going to be the biggest platform for him. Yeah. So it's Joe Rogan yep. and Vlad. Yeah. They're the two biggest, you know, 7 million subscribers, 18 million subscribers. So it was whoever came at us first, you know, and whatever deal we had to work and whatever we had to do, we wanted to make sure that the first interview that he ever did, besides with me. Right. You know, because nobody, let's not forget, I'm the first guy with the, yeah, you're the first guy <laughs> yeah. um, would be with somebody like that. Okay. Um, I mean, so I'm assuming it's already done. It's it's, it's done. Yeah, it's yeah. done. It will be posted tomorrow, one of, one of the days. And, you know, everybody has a different feeling about Vlad or whoever. Everybody has something to say about everybody. But yeah. the guy treated us with respect. I don't have any bad words to say about him. Was it, uh, did he do it in person or was this via, like, satellite? Typically his stuff satellite. Yeah, I really can't say. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've, I've I've interviewed a lot of people that's been interviewed by Vlad, uh, former drug traffickers, counterfeiters. Yeah. Um, and the, the setup is always I, I'm surprised at how some of the setups are, and not that they're bad. He's he does yeah, a yeah. great job. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, and to me, it's smart because instead of having to fly somebody in, if you just send them to like a nearby studio and set it up, I mean, it still has a great look to it. And yeah. It's, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's cheaper on his part, so it's actually kind of brilliant. Yeah. The way he does it. Um. I think I'm, I'm can't wait for that interview because just to kind of have somebody probe Joey and I'm sure the way Vlad did, you know, yeah, I'd the, love to see the way Joey answers questions. Yeah. Interview. The interview went great. It was very respectful. Yeah. You know, he let Joey talk. Vlad talked a little bit. So mm -hmm. it, it, it couldn't have went better in my opinion. Yeah. Well, that's good. And I think a lot of people are, are excited to see it because you guys talk, you mix in a little bit of stuff here and there about certain people, but you mainly do it about sports and, you know, I, I love sports. Like I said yeah. earlier, I learned about football betting, you know, from my father. And so I enjoy that aspect of it. And I, I've done things like that with a few guys, you know, here and there. And I'm like, you know, if it goes good, then you can try to make something out of it. Yeah, yeah, of bad, you turn it into a comedy skit because you're so horrible at it. Yeah. So we, we do a good job with it. We like it. We actually are partnering up with a handicapper. We're going to announce that next week, which he's going to cover all sports for us, you know, because people, you, you know, you're in the job, like, with the way me and Joey are doing, it's so much work. Oh, yeah. It's a ton of work to travel, the filming twice a week, things like that. There's not enough time for us to do the sports with 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 it, like yeah. every night because of NBA and NHL, college basketball now. Football is going to be our main thing, me and Joey on screen. But right. we partnered up with somebody who's going to do UFC, NBA, NHL, soccer, everything. He's going to make videos, and we're just going to collaborate on everything. Uh, well, that's smart. I mean, that's yeah. smart. You're, you're networking. What was it like interviewing Ric Flair? So I got to be honest with you. It was cool, but the guys who brought Ric Flair to us he, were two gentlemen. When I, They took us out to dinner the night before. I actually had a better time with them two than Ric Flair. Really? Yeah, I did. They were aces. They, one was a, a wrestler. One was the restaurant that we went to that we filmed at. He was right. the owner. 
they were awesome guys. Ric Flair was cool, but you got to realize he's older now, yeah. you know. So it was it. It was cool though. But who else do you know that was on episode like six that got the interview with Ric Flair? Bro, I mean, like I'm a mark for wrestler, man. I grew up in the heyday of you know Ric Flair when he was yeah, in WCW, yeah. and then like my prime wrestling days were when it was Attitude Era. Yeah, yeah. And had the Stone Cold and the Rock. So like Ric Flair has always just been one of them dudes that I would love. To. I've gotten a chance to meet him a few times at like autograph shows. Yeah, but never like to have a, a sit yeah. down. One I mean, one. I, we were with him for like three, four hours. We ate lunch with him. We did the interview. You know, and he can he can go. Yeah, he can go. He, 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 yeah, he was, you know, he, he, he's he's a good time. You know, I don't have nothing bad to say about him. He's just older now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what is uh, some of the other podcasts that you did? What's been your favorite so far I, outside of you and Joey together? What's some of the interviews that so you've done? So like one of my closest friends from this genre now of he has a totally different genre, but we actually became friends, AJ Galanti. Yeah. So me and him, me, him, and Joey were his father, you know, just downright great people. That was the, the Netflix show, right? On his yeah. Family, what the name? What was the name of that? It's, it was called The Trashers. The Trash. That's yeah. Right. yeah, Danbury Trashers. So it was, it was, a, it was a great podcast. Us three. It was the day after New Year, so it was fun. Um, that's probably my favorite. Danny Garcia, loved them. One of my, another one of my favorites. Michael Delzato mm -hmm. used to play for the Flyers. Got drafted to Rangers. Which just one of just excellent. Um, yeah, I watched you talking about his first goal and yeah, you know, all the emotional stuff. That was cool. Bernard Hopkins was great. You know, that was fun. I, I liked every one, but if I had to go down to one, it would probably be AJ Galante because of just the, uh, just because like we vibe together. You know what I mean? We, we're friends still to this day. We talk on the regular, like, you know, every day, you know, so that's probably, that would probably be my favorite one. Now, does he have, has he got his own podcast? Yeah, he does. AJ's got his own podcast with um, Diamond Hands. Who's okay. one of the fighters in the league still? He's just a beast. Um, their podcast is great. You should definitely go check them out. You would you would enjoy it. Do they go out of the same studio where Ian is? Do they yes. have a, okay. Ian, Mean Girls, yep. and their podcast is all in the same studio? Okay. I've been the I done Ian's show back in October. Yeah. Which is, I think that's how you said you, you spotted me. That's how I spotted you. Yeah. Me and Ian, we I want Joey to come on. We we gotta figure out a date that works, but you know, we're just put that's been in the works for like months, actually. Yeah, Ian's a good dude, man. He, he uh, flew up there, met him, and the TikToks that he put out on my video just went like Crazy. bananas. Like if yeah. you go on there and you go to his most popular one, I think mine is like second. Yeah. But the caveat to that is he re-released it uh, on New Year's. So the views between the very first ones, if you add them up together, I am number one on there, but he's got there the top go. right Love now. So I'm trying good to get him. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. He, he, Absolutely. He, you know, I picked his brain because he's obviously, you know, doing his thing up here. Yeah. He blew up really quick in a real short time. And it's harder to do that when you don't have a name or something to go off of. Yeah. It's a little bit easier when you have a name because you guys, man, when y'all first come on, I think with by, you know, very quickly, you were already 20, 30,000 subs. I yeah, mean, we had, cool. we had, I remember we, like me and my family, we would watch it every night. I yeah. would text Joey. I mean, it would just click and click. We had like 20,000 subscribers. I think it had to be like, Two episodes, maybe. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. I've been going for two years and I've got like half. We got days. like we got fifty, we almost got fifty thousand subscribers. We don't even go on YouTube. So what happened with YouTube? So what happened was they just demonetized all our videos. Every one of them. Every one. The first three were good. And then after that, they just kept striking them. We kept getting flagged. We kept getting emails. We would have to appeal it. So it's like, listen. Joey's not going to change who he is for anybody. So if he can't say or be how he wants to be, right. what's the point for us to give the content out? Yeah. So let's move over to Patreon where we can say whatever we want, charge a little money, give T-shirts away, give an autograph away. You know, we got a lot of things like people want to donate to give free subscriptions back out. Mm -hmm. So it was just the best way to do it. Okay. What, um, I mean, did they give, YouTube is very vague of why they do what they do. They well, don't they, really like give you a specific age thing. restriction. They kept saying age restriction. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just an excuse. Yeah. Cause like I've had, when I post a video up and I don't know how you guys did it, but like when I would post one up, sometimes it would stay green, but then it would hit, it would hit yellow. 
and yeah. then you would have to get it reviewed. And sometimes that could take a week. Yeah. It's just, and then it's if always something. Back, and if it wouldn't be reviewed, it wouldn't give me a reason why. Yeah. And now I've interviewed a little bit of everybody on my show. I've had yeah. porn stars on here. I've had drug, you know, smugglers. Yeah, no, I know. So it's hard to pick which part might be the part that they're exactly. saying. But I've, I've done one thing and it's really blown my mind. There was a lady that I interviewed. She was in the drug game in Harlem. Her name was uh, Miss T. She was like right in there with all the guys from the movie Paid in Full. If you ever okay. seen the movie? Yeah, Paid yeah, yeah. She was married to Ace. Um, she knew all those guys. Rich Porter. Um, uh, what's the one that got shot? Alpo Martinez. She knew yeah. all those. I posted it up. It, it YouTube wouldn't monetize it. I deleted it. I re-uploaded it and changed a, a different banner with the logos different and retitled it and I let it go. Yeah, see? It's just so different. I, I didn't change a damn thing, but the title and the logos, yeah. the bottom, that was it. Nothing on the video I changed. Yeah. So it is it is very fickle. Um, yeah, absolutely. So now going forward, everything is on uh, Patreon. So what we do, we put the full episode on Patreon. We put a four to six minute clip on Spotify and a four to six minute clip on YouTube. Try to get maybe like 10 minutes on YouTube if we can. But yeah. if you want to hear all the juicy stuff, if you want to hear all the good content, it's Patreon. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a subscriber. I actually subscribed twice. Uh, go, I, I, one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to. I think I hit you that one day. I was yeah, like, you I, did. I, you texted me. I said yeah, I was subscribed and it was like it refreshed or something, and I did it yeah. again and then subscribed through two different emails. And I thought, well, I like it, but I don't like it that yeah. damn much. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I had to go on and hear the episode when he talked about Salvi. Yeah. Um, that was a good one. Uh, that's a whole polarizing story yeah. in and of itself with that. And there was a real interesting uh, thing that I talked about on one of the shows. I think it was, was it Salvi that sold Donald Trump some land that he used for the casino? Or it was I don't know. I'd be lying if I said it. I don't know. I know that he bought some land from somebody. It was I want to say it was from Salvi, and he paid a good bit of money for it. And it was for um when he was building that casino in there. But I think what had happened, what I read was he didn't do it directly. He he had like a subsidiary company buy it, yeah. so it wouldn't be like him buying it, you know, straight from Salvi. But I thought that was just an interesting piece. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I never heard of it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so where do you see you guys going from here? Like, where do you see this going to? I, I mean, I see it going to the moon. I really do. I believed in it from day one. Some people might not have like, you know, we never told anybody besides the four people that were involved in this when the episode one was coming out. Yeah. All I did, if you remember, our first picture is me and Joey standing at a restaurant and mm -hmm. saying podcast coming soon. No, or big news coming soon. I put, and then yeah. everybody, the phones were just blowing up, blowing up. But then I oh, flew to was... Florida, came home, and I told my parents and my wife, we just filmed episode one. So episode one will be out on Thursday, and that's how it went. And you eventually, you were still selling cars when y'all first started. Yeah, when I first started, I was selling cars. I was flying to Florida on a Tuesday, my day off from work. In the morning, 8, 8.20 flight, coming back on the 8 p.m. flight, going back to work Wednesday morning. Never missed a day of work, never took a vacation day, never took a sick day. Never Jeez. once. Yeah. That's some grinding. Yeah. You got to grind. Oh, yeah. You got to. I mean, I work a, a regular job, and then I come home, and I do this, yeah. and I don't have a team or nothing behind me. Mm -hmm. I wish to God I had somebody that would help me to, you know, intern or something. Eventually, when it gets big enough, you will. Yeah. And that's that's the hope. But, I mean, you know, that's the grind. That's the passion. You got to put in that time, and, yeah. you know, eventually somebody will, will see it, and the right video catches. That's the hope anyway. Absolutely. But, you eventually decided this is what you were going to do full time. And I believe that the, the possibilities for you guys are endless. Yeah. I, I knew it was going to be full time because I knew going into this, I knew if Joey's going to do this a hundred percent that I can't do it 50%. That's mm. not fair to him. So I wanted, you know, I wanted to make sure he knew that I was a hundred percent in too. So when we were grinding, like it was so, so exhausting for both of us, like, we were thinking about adding people to help us because we we it was so crazy. I mean, the the views, the the messages, it was just crazy. So it just came to the point in work where they weren't so supportive of the podcast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that they got mad that I was getting bigger than them. And yeah. people were coming in the door to take a picture with me. People were calling up and see if Joey was there. You know, <laughs> people were ringing the phone, just asking to talk to me. 
Could, could have worked a deal with that. Maybe you buy a car and get a picture with Joey. I mean, that you know. would have been the smart thing for them to do. But yeah, instead, yeah. instead, it didn't work out that way. And I walked in the office one day and I said, that's it. That was it. Well, you got to do what you got to do, man. You got to yeah. chase it. And you guys are doing good. I mean, I'm enjoying the content. Um, one thing I, I will touch on, like what, what was the deciding factor on what number to go to charge with? Not to, for the money wise. Yeah. I really, I, I, I really don't know. You know, you got to realize uh, Kevin Connolly's behind us. So he, you know, he's telling us things and guiding us in the direction. Where they think entourage, we're, right? Yeah. Entourage. Yeah. So, you know, everything is, I don't know if it was a certain amount of the number. I just think that it was the number that we were kind of like told that this would be the best way to do it. Right. Cause you don't want to overprice yourself, but you want to make it affordable to, you know, well, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah exactly. I mean, and listen, it's less than a dollar a day. Yeah. And if, listen, if you can't afford it, there's going to be a way that you can afford it. Like I said, people want to donate money. It's not about the money. It's really not. I mean, listen, of course, everybody loves money. But if somebody needs $15 to watch the content, you can bet any amount of money myself, but definitely Joey would pay for it. Well, and I think, too, like not only do you guys play off each other pretty well with the sports and the comedy because he'll break your balls about who you like yeah. or pick or overs or totals or whatever, and you do the same to him. And then you guys have other guys, you know, that come in, but the, the interview portions are good. And that's yeah. one of the times when I reached out to Joey, I was just curious what y'all had the, uh, I don't know. Did you have on the lawyer that got out the guy that was wrongfully incarcerated or he just put up a clip about that? So there was two Adam who we just did the episode on got 213 years and right. then he got, and then he got out early for the stacking wall, but they told him if you just blame Joey, We'll lay out. He had no idea who Joey was. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not who I'm. I'm this was a lawyer. Oh, this so that he got charged forty seven years. He was at our Christmas party. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he got wrongfully committed, convicted. Yeah. And the lawyer, but y'all haven't had the lawyer on that got him out yet. Do, no, Dominic Cray. Yeah, I think we pushed back. Um, yeah. he's a logistics lawyer, one of our good friends. He was on. He's got very knowledgeable. Um, he's got a nice channel. You should go check him out too. We put, yeah, I've, I've checked him out. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen so him until we had him on also. Yeah. That's kind of the, uh, the thing here is when you're in this genre, you're, you're not going to be able to come across a situation where you're interviewing that somebody else doesn't like. Yeah. And that's what I've told people from the very beginning. I'm like, look, you know, this is my channel. I interview who I interview. You know, if somebody wants to sponsor me, then maybe we can talk about who I don't have on here. But until yeah, yeah. that happens, I'm going to interview anybody. So it's, it's inevitable that you're going to run across situations to where, you know, people don't like who you have on. Yeah. That's fine. But I would never let that affect my judgment or my feelings towards someone else because they had someone on. They're doing it for the interview. I mean, I've had people on that I didn't necessarily agree with. Yeah. But they've treated me fair. Well, the, the thing that I don't like, like if somebody says tomorrow, I'm going to go smack Joe Perry. I'm going to yeah. go smack little snuff. And then tomorrow you asked me to go on your podcast, which we just did just now. And now yeah. tomorrow you interview that person. I ain't got, I don't have no time for you. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's the shit that really, you know, not that you, you I, we're, I'm looking at that to say, but I'm not stupid neither. Yeah. You know I, mean? I don't yeah. watch one podcast of any of that genre. None of Literally don't. If if people don't send me the clips or Joey the clips, we would never see it. Yeah. We watch literally sports content. We watch TikTok viral videos. Um, and we watch everything about gambling. Yeah. You you want to know one of the coolest guests that I ever have on? Who? Oh. Have you ever watched that Netflix show called Bad Sport? No, I don't think I did. You never watched? Okay, so it's like a couple different um instances where people I guess they would say corrupted sports. Do you remember the Arizona state basketball point shaving scandal with yeah. Henrik Smith? Yeah. So the guy that was the mastermind behind that, his name is Joe Gagliano. I had him on. Really? And he told that story and like, so I'm super into gambling. So I yeah, understood cool. like what he was saying. His buddy, Benny Silman, who was a bookie on campus, um, called him one day and told him on the phone. He was like, I remember like it was yesterday. He's like, Joe, I got a fix. He was like, I got headaches I got in my pocket. Yeah, he I was in for 20 grand. And I mean, it was just like, he knew that he had a gold mine. And like, so the deal was they wiped his 20 grand clean. He had to not throw the game. They could still win him. They just couldn't cover the spread. 
and they were going to pay him, I think, like an extra 20 grand on top of it. Wow. Or it may have even been more than that. I can't remember. But I know they cleaned up. And the reason they cleaned up was because those two games were right around the Super Bowl. So all the action and attention was on the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, Bowl and they, on that. they skated through. And then the kid called him back, wanted to bet like 20 grand on himself. And so Joe was like, you know, I've done made at this point a million and some change. I'm going to let him bet the 20 grand because worst case scenario, he loses. I got him for a third game. Yeah. And it happened. He lost. He got him for the third game. Then people started paying attention of why all these money was being put. I think some, they kind of were forced into a fourth. And I think the, I don't know if it was the FBI or secret. Somebody came in at halftime and told him, was like, look, we got a feeling something's going on. You guys better play up to your potential. Agreed. They come out, blew the team out, and everybody lost some money. And then they finally did get arrested, like yeah. almost a year after the, the fact. But, I mean, that was one of the coolest interviews. Greed will get you every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Every yeah. time. Well, Joe, man, I can't uh, thank you enough for coming on. Tell everybody where they can find uh, the podcast links or w- anything you want to share merch wise. Get, tell us where they can get a hold the of full it. episodes on Patreon. All the links are in our bio for the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. We have skinny hats, skinny merchandise from coffee cups, the stickers to the cartoon picture of me and Joey, to Bull- the broad street bully shirt with me and Joey, YouTube, Spotify is links are in our bio, but Patreon, you're going to get the full episode, the links in our bio for that also. All right. Well, that'll have it. Uh, that'll do it for this episode, man. I, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, you know, I know that, um, there'll be a lot of stuff said, you know, going forward in the future, but you know, yeah. I enjoy you guys. Content. Thank you, you know what I've, been on, I've been on other people's, uh, shows that, you know, have certain feelings, but you know, I've always said that I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm, I'm a fan and uh, I'm glad you could come on and, you know, shed a little light on who you are. Cause I think that was, you know, maybe people outside of Philly didn't really know who you were. And when I actually started digging into your story, I said, this, I like it. You know, he's yeah, got a good, thank you. I appreciate good that story. So that's, that's good to, we don't want to let that be overshadowed by everything else because it's hard to look past that. When you see you guys riding in Royce's and <laughs> yeah. you know, in, the, in the boxes, everybody's like, how much money you make it on Patreon. You're in a role. Yeah. I bought a Rolls Royce yesterday. Like, are these people that stupid? I mean, like, really, we're in a restaurant in Boca Raton. There's Rolls Royces everywhere. Yeah, I bought it off Patreon money. <laughs> Crazy. Well, if, you, if the Patreon is going that way, you need to shoot me some points. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah, I appreciate well. it, my friend. Uh, that'll do it for this interview. Yeah. Check out Skinny Podcast. I'll put links in the bio uh, again. And, you know, tell Joey, I hope everything works out for him. Well, I wish yeah. you guys nothing but the best going Thank forward. You, I appreciate it. Have a good night, all right? You too, my friend.